to. The, uh, the idea then too is, um, you know, we should keep kids in school. There's no two ways around this. Uh, kids, I, I know my youngest has performed so much better being in school. I understand that. Um, I, I think we all understand that that's kind of a proven fact out there. But uh, again, there are some experts out there that say, yeah, that can happen, but only to a certain extent of the amount of, of disease in your community. Right now, and I haven't looked today because I, I, again, um, I, I kind of didn't want to uh, because I, I was a little nervous to see where we're at. But yesterday, we were about 750 per 100,000. Um, we're getting in new cases, 300 a day. Uh, we got a, uh, as I understand it from staff, we got a dump yesterday from the state um, around 600. Now, that's just not for one day, but that, that's going to be over a couple of days. But we got an immediate dump. Of, so. I, I can show you numbers, we can discuss that, but it, it just continues to grow. Um, I, I, it's almost useless now to show some of the graphs we've been for the last couple of weeks because they just get worse. Um, so what, what's the idea here? Um, I, I'm gonna save the, I think the most, one of the, one of the more uh, discussion points for the end here, but I would kind of want to walk through the resolution itself. Um, you know, we, we did state some numbers, okay, and um, our, our pop-up testing last week, right now, we're over 20% positivity rate from the 4,500 that we did. We don't have all the data in yet uh, because we're still receiving information, but that's that is significant. Uh, the positivity rate in in, in Lucas County, um, you know, is well over I think the 15% that the governor said of the state. So uh, again, something to, to think about. The the idea here um, again is to be measured. We talked about kids being in school and how important it is, but the thought here is we need to be measured, we, meet, we need to be deliberate, we need to take the best possible action we can to, again, make sure that we're protecting the community from COVID, protecting the hospitals, but then also then to understand that kids have needs, parents have needs, uh, we, we have to do some things. So taking the data that we know and, and some, of the, uh, some of the research out there, uh, looked at, let, let's, let's kind of split, split the kids, if you would. Um, relative to grades. So we know that maybe the younger group of, of kids uh, isn't so easy to spread. The way that their, their schools are made up are such that they're, they don't move around, unlike the older kids. They do move around from class to class. Uh, so uh, again, you know, that's kind of the idea here is that if we look at K through six, which is up to about that 11 year old um, or so, let's try to, let, let's keep them in school Okay, let's have the ability for if the school districts can, because some of them can't right now, and I think our, some of our parents need to understand that, that because of staffing shortages or whatever, that they can't keep K through six in school and, and, and have, have in-person learning. But if they can, that's, that's great because it does a couple of things. It keeps them learning, okay? It keeps them in the environment that, again, parents don't have to worry about them at home. Um, you know, we, we have nurses, we have doctors, we have essential employees that, again, they need to be on the job. So should they be worrying about their child? So th there, there, is some, there is some factual research and, you know, um, public, public ability for us to say, yeah, we need to maybe keep K through six in, in class. Here's, the, here, here's the, the flip side of this, is that looking at seven through 12, and as we go through the, uh, the resolution, we, we can see that, uh, again, as an order, we would say that 7 through 12 um, would go virtual. How do we do this? Uh, by the Ohio Revised Code, you know, we don't get a pick and choose, so, per se, on what we can or can't do with schools. What we do is we, cl we close all schools. Uh, hear me out. I mean, that, that probably is a, a little bit of a breath intake. We close all schools, but then we can say what can be in those schools. So, again, K through 6, all right? 7th through 12th would be out. Let's, let's dig a little deeper into the issues inside the schools because again, meeting with schools every week, they, they, they've indicated their concerns. So here's a couple things. Um, one, you know, teachers are gonna have to be in, in class for the, the, the K through 12, so that, that's a given. The idea here too is that, you know, going virtual, there are some schools that have their teachers actually come in. So again, they should be allowed to be in the building. There are some special needs kids that you know need that really do truly need to be in school. I was told that, um, and, and these are those individuals that truly truly need that one on one um, um, instruction. Uh, that 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 you know they they are they are those type of special needs kids, and, and so they again they asked if we could do that, and, and I think that is very legitimate. Um, 
you know, the, the idea then too of um, why, why we're doing that. Um, I, I think it, it allows, it's measured, it allows those, um, those, those, those individuals that truly need to be in there to be in there while we're getting those other individuals out as well then too as and i didn't realize this exam time is now so we're we're, we're saying if you need to have kids in for exams yes please do Let, let's not let's not destroy an education uh by not being able to have take an exam or that they have to figure out some other way so again those are some things that are are allowed what about time frame all right so I would right now recommend um, if, if an order is passed such as this uh, to immediately recommend that schools follow the order by again, going virtual or K through six. Um, but at the latest, December 4th at four o'clock, the order is enacted. Why, why is that? Uh, again, hearing from schools, you know, schools need a little bit of time to, um, to, to again, get their plan in place and make that happen um, students. I'm sorry, uh, parents of students uh, are going to have to do some maybe finagling of, of uh, schedules and things of that nature. So give them some time. I, I do believe talking with some of the uh, principals and superintendents, uh, they, they probably will not come back starting the 30th that they would adhere to something that we would, we would order. Um, so I, I think, can, can we stop there? Um, and that is, that's the, the order through a resolution process. Before we get into, I think, uh, the last point that we really want to have a discussion on, Dr. Ross, I would turn this back to you for comments, concerns, so that we can kind of piece this together and make sure that it's organized uh, on our discussion. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, <clears throat> I guess, uh, let me do my best to summarize from my understanding what I'm reading in this order. And, uh, and then I think we should take some comments from other board members uh, about their concerns with this. I mean, we have to realize that the federal and the state government have essentially left it to us as to what to do with schools. There are a lot of other things that we do not have uh, as full of control over. And so I think some of what we're trying to do is to control what we can control. And uh, the schools are one of those things. They've been basically left to the counties to make decisions on. And up till now, we've done our best, as you said, Eric, to keep especially the youngest kids in school getting in-person learning. And we do recognize that the data suggests that in-school spread, and our data suggests that in-school spread is not the problem, especially in those younger kids. But we know that there are some, and will likely be more, the more we get together, <clears throat> uh, more spread coming from the high school age kids, uh, middle school age kids. And that that is indeed a fact. We know that uh, as the case counts go above 100 per uh, 100 per 100,000, and we've been on a couple of days at 500 per 100,000, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but we've been five times the level where experts say that there can be uh, community spread through via the schools. And our positivity rate greater than 10%, well, we've been well above 10%. Uh, so we're at a point where the experts would say there's a good chance that we will be seeing spread through the schools. We're gonna see spread just about everywhere. In all honesty, if it was solely up to me, I would be closing res restaurants in the state. Uh, I would be closing bars in the state, other, unless they had some way to set things up with social distance outside. I mean, that I, I, we're taking care of what we can take care of as a board of health right now. That's not up to us. That's really up to the governor to make some of these other decisions. So people need to understand that we're looking at what we as a board of health here in Lucas County can have some control over. Uh, and the schools have done a great job. As Eric said, so far, they've really done a great job keeping doing the social distance, the hand hygiene, the masks, they're doing everything that they can to keep the kids safe, but it's outside the school that's not safe. And those kids are living two thirds of their time outside the schools. So that's kind of what we're facing. Now in the state, they've closed down all the universities, right, uh, Eric? I mean, they're, they're virtual only now. So, so they've made that decision about, uh, about our state universities. And uh, so that's already kind of been decided. And again, as Eric was saying, and this is one of my key concerns here, we're on the verge of, again, overwhelming our healthcare resources. We've got a situation where we've had our emergency room doctors, our first responders, 
our uh, nurses and doctors in the hospitals basically on the front lines, putting their lives at risk for the last eight months now. And they're gonna have to continue to do that for a few more months until you know the vaccine uh, is available and, and our healthcare workers are vaccinated. And it's up to us to do everything we can to help them so that they aren't overwhelmed. I mean, the, the fact is, is that we just heard that a major hospital in, in Cleveland is about to become overwhelmed. It won't be that long before we are as well. And we know already there are problems with personnel in our hospital systems here in, in Lucas County. So to me, I think the good news, as you said, Eric, is that we've got three vaccines now that look to be pretty effective, some of them very highly effective. So far, at least the early data, they seem safe, we'll have to see. But uh, until we can start getting shots into arms and give it a month or so for immunity to develop, uh, we don't have anything else we can do other than to try and distance ourselves, wear our masks, do our hand hygiene. That, that's what we've got. And by having the kids uh, in school, especially the, the middle school and, uh, se and senior high school students, uh, we're just adding fuel to the fire. We don't know exactly how much fuel, but there's some good research to suggest that, that we will be adding fuel to the fire. In a, and even if those kids just get kind of sick, if they give it to grandma, grandma may not make it. So I think that uh, this is the situation we're in. We're basically asking uh, the schools to give the kids uh, a virtual education only from age, uh, from the seventh grade up. And, uh, and if they, they can make a choice, if they wanna try to keep the younger kids in school, I don't think that's completely unreasonable, but this is what we're facing. And I think that uh, the order to, and I, I'm saying an order, not a recommendation, an order to actually go to virtual only December 4th is, um, is certainly sensible from what I understand of public health science. So we're trying to follow our, the best advice that we can. We recognize that there are compromises here, that there are difficulties here, that this will have an impact on the families of the kids. But I think that's uh, what I would support. And, and as I said, if I could shut down even more things, I probably would right now, because as I said in our last meeting, we're on fire. And we need to do something. We need to drop and roll, jump in a pond. I don't care what, you know, if we get dirty or wet, but we are, we are about to overwhelm ourselves with this disease in our community. And it's up to us to do whatever we can uh, to try and uh, keep the, uh, you know, to dig a firewall, whatever you want to think of in terms of this, uh, of this disease. So those are my thoughts on it. So this uh, order has my support, Eric, and I'd like to hear from other board members. Dr. Ross, just to, I, for the board members' edification, the reason the reason why we said we recommend to do this right now and not wait to the fourth is that you know we're, we see we see Thanksgiving, we know five to seven days after a large gathering, if they're exposed, they could uh, you know uh, be, become infectious, come down with COVID. Uh, so that really is kind of the the outside window. But we talking with the schools, they do like I said, they do need some time to to enact their plans. The reason why we're going January 11th um, is because again, Christmas or the holiday season um, and then the New Year's holiday, we know after holidays, we see a spike. So that's the thinking. And uh, for the most part, it truly is about 15 days only that we're asking you know, those high school kids to go virtual. So I, I wanna make sure that the, uh, uh, the board members knew that. Uh, Eric, do you want to uh, say anything more about the athletics part of this, or do you want to say that? Yeah, no, I, I, if there's if if there are no real concerns so far with what we've talked about, if we're kind of if we're in an agreement, um, again, that doesn't preclude us from having conversations here after we talk about sports um, and extracurriculars. Um, but I do believe um, I do believe that uh, learning what we did yesterday with Cleveland, um, you know, we, we've been talking with the schools about sports and extracurricular activities. And I just don't want to focus here on sports. I think the extracurriculars are important too. Um, you know, we've, we've had outbreaks um, from bands and, and other extracurricular activity groups. So again, it's just not sports. Sports, we've had outbreaks. Uh, you know, we've had to quarantine entire teams. So we, we do know that, again, just by the nature of sports and some of these extra activities, the ability for the disease to jump inside of those groups is, is large. 
so we, we really started um, looking at the sports issue uh, and what do we do in the extracurricular activity? Th these are important things for our kids. Um, and we, we've talked about this. Uh, it, for some of our kids, it's almost as important as the academics uh, because of the, the things that they learn as an athlete or in those, in those disciplines uh, that are those extracurricular activities. But unfortunately, um, you know, the, the idea here with the, if you could, if you would, the coming tide that we predict, uh, it, it would not be, it would not be as, as beneficial to us if we would continue with sports the way they are. Um, I, I do know that, um, you know, the, the governor has looked at a couple of different things, but here locally, um, you know, I, I would, I would suggest to the board uh, that we would we would actually, I'll, I'll read this to you the way that it's stated. To limit COVID-19 spread among students, all sports and extracurricular activities are prohibited from utilizing any building interior space for practice or contents, content, contests during the same time period. Uh, again, um, th this is a tough one um, as well as the academic because it's almost, you almost need to take it in two parts. But again, um, we're, not, we're, we're not saying to stop, we're saying to take a pause. Um, and I, I wanted to offer that to the board for discussion. I do believe this might add a little bit more discussion or have a little bit more discussion than the first section. So um, Dr. Ross, that would be my recommendation for the order. Okay. Well, I think uh, there are issues here that are not, I, I mean, I wish we could be 100% positive about you know, what the impact of this will be. And I don't think we can. Um, the, the, and again, the, you know, the governor has uh, uh, ultimate authority on this, if I understand right, Eric, but uh, it, at this particular point, it's up to us to say that there's enough community spread going on that we believe that it's going to end up in the schools and then that that's gonna reignite an even bigger fire back in the community. And that's what we believe will happen if we don't take some action now. Um, so I, and I'm, I've been watching the chat here, just so you're aware, Eric, I don't know if you have been, but there's a lot of things that people are saying and they're questioning the correctness of what we're saying. For example, they're questioning whether the universities in the state are closed. Um, they're saying UT is still open. I don't, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, so uh, they're also saying that it's, it shouldn't be up to us, uh, that this isn't our responsibility, but I think from my understanding, it certainly is uh, to make a decision with the schools about what we should do with that's in best interest of the community. So, uh, uh, I'm going to open it up for additional comments from, um, you know, from the uh, board members. Uh, certainly, as I said, there's a lot of uh, stuff on the chat here that's, uh, that is telling us we're wrong. So uh, let's hear from other board members and, uh, you know, somebody may want to take a... Uh, hey, Dr. Ross. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Uh, Richard Fernandez, uh, Board of Health. Uh, representing the city of Toledo. Um, as I've been thinking about this uh, since early in the summer, watching our school administrators and teachers prepare for the coming school season, knowing personally teachers, uh, my mother, a high school teacher, uh, my best friend's mother and neighbor, uh, a third grade teacher, um, knowing uh, multiple new community members who've reached out to me uh, with their concerns, uh, spending time on the phone, reading letters that have come through the health department that we've all read. There have been concerns going both ways. Uh, and and I, I want the community to know that we feel strongly that children should be in school, children should have socialization, humans need socialization. We're all feeling the burden of not being able to have the liberties of the pre-COVID environment where we can hug each other and touch each other. You know, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. Like part of my healing my clients is, is being able to make contact with them. And Dr. Ross knows that a physician benefits a patient from just being able to make contact and build trust. 
So we all need that and children need it probably the most. So, so I agree with, with lot, in large part what Mrs. Lee has said, what Dave has said in the comments, what, what Jean and Lee have said that we, we want our children to be in school. I think that what our health commissioner has presented to us is the opportunity for us as an entire Lucas County community to look at this point in time at a boiling point perhaps where our hospitals are reaching their capacity and in turn to look at what is it that our community can do because we, we can't cancel Thanksgiving. You don't cancel Christmas. That's not that's not a, a jurisdiction, that, that's individual responsibility. We've spent this whole year challenging our individual responsibilities. Now, what is community responsibility? It is this, it's saying, hey guys, we're, we're at halftime at a really hard, rough game, and I don't know if we're winning this game, but I know we're tired, and I know we got a whole nother half of a game to play, and, and here's the play. So, someone's got to call the play. And, and if it is through, you know, January 11th that, that we make this hard choice, that we reduce the number of, of interacting networks that our individuals go out of the home and then bring back to the home, um, that we have children walking around in the hallways in their, in their classrooms, that's part of the reason that, that 7 through 12 is more challenging than the younger students. I, I think that we're being posed with this challenge and it's not it's not that we think it's an easy challenge. We're posing a challenge to the whole community because it affects the families, it affects the teachers, uh, and it affects the children the most. Uh, and, and we're asking the community to, to take up this challenge only because we're at a point where we don't have much else to do and, and we wanna protect our hospitals. Uh, and if we can do that, then we can move on. Um, and we wanna get back into school as well. That's how I see it, and, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm, right on, I'm right on the fence in both ways. I want the kids in school, but I, I want to get through this season, which I think will be challenging, and we're already seeing the challenge. And whatever the case rate is now, we won't know for, for two weeks with our lagging indicators of positivity. Um, that, that's where I am, and that moves me towards supporting uh, this order. Uh, but it is a very hard thing. Uh, I'm interested in the other board members, um, and, and I know there's a question from um, from one of our superintendents as to whether or not we're taking questions from the public. So I want to acknowledge that question. Dr. Ross, can I say something? Sure. Yes, please. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you. Um, you know, I, one of the comments I saw in there um, was talking about whether the board is made up of elected officials or non-elected officials. And, and I think this is uh, a good point and a good question to be raised. So the Board of Health is created um, through uh, state statute to be a representation of our community. And I, and I think it's important to emphasize that, that what you see before you are nine of 12 of the citizens in which each of the jurisdictions that represent and the elected officials that represent those jurisdictions have appointed. We've come from all corners of Lucas County um, whether that is out in the townships where I live or in the city where I know Dr. Fernandez lives um, and we're out to uh, the city of Oregon where Michelle Schultz lives. So we, we all come from different portions of our community. We all come from diverse backgrounds um, and we're all a portion of this board. And I think the intent of putting this decision within the hands of a board of health is the intent that it is made by a group of citizens and a group of residents of our community because underneath it all, the most important institution we all have is our families that build up into the institutions that I think what um, is being proposed here is trying to be protected. So I think what these nine citizens before you today and the 12 of us that our board members are trying to do is to protect and support some of the most critical institutions that we have in our community, which are our hospitals, which are our schools, which are our public places. And so I think what you see is us attempting to protect that but we do that not in any way trying to say that we know more or that we are smarter or that we are more knowledgeable. This disease is very complex. I think that that's fully recognized. I, I can just say on my behalf and many of the board members I've talked about. And we understand that the thing in which most residents are looking to do is protect the most important institution to them, which is their families. 
And so to Dr. Fernandez's point, um, we understand the impact. Um, I think every board member understands the impact of not being in school, not having sports. But I think at this time, all of us are just trying to um, reach out based on the knowledge we have and make the best decision um, that we can make to protect the institutions that we've all come together to create in this community that help protect us all. So um, I do support um, this initiative. Um, to those who would say uh, there has not been community spread through sports, I just want to make sure that we are clear. There has been community spread through sports, um, significant community spread. So I think it's important that uh, we just we make sure that that's the information we're operating on. Um, I believe that, you know, I believe to my core, that's factual information that's been provided to me. Um, in fact, I know personal, people personally who have gotten COVID at sporting events, youth sporting events, and have come down with COVID. So I think that um, we need to make sure they're all talking about the same things here. And I think the goal is, and I, and I wanna make sure we're um, putting this out, the goal here is that we get back to normalcy, to buy time to get to a vaccine, to make sure that we do get to enjoy school sports in the formats that we are all traditionally used to and that I think we all traditionally want to have. So um, I'm hopeful that we can all come together and work together on the solution. And I think we're all sympathetic to the impact um, that it has on each individual person's family. And I think we recognize that and I don't think uh, that we want to do anything to harm that in what we do. Thank you. Just a quick Additional back board. of the napkin. Oh. Go ahead. I just a quick back of the back of the napkin math. Uh, December fourth through January eleventh. To me, that sounds like about seventeen days of virtual learning. Thank you. Depending on how the schools, how, depending on how the schools would normally take uh, a vacation or or coming back from school, that is. Uh, so I want to remind us that we're talking about seventeen days, uh, not a month, not two months. Uh, 17 days to get through the holiday season. And if that prevents, you know, additional community spread, uh, even giving us that little bit of an edge, it gives us a chance, hopefully toward the end of December, to get shots into arms of our healthcare personnel to at least protect them. Um, but we still would have the issue of overwhelming the number of people that we have to actually take care. Um, again, I've been basing a lot of my thinking on uh, the CDC's recommendation for whether or not schools are uh, at high risk for transmission of COVID-19. And they give a number of indicators. They say if your cases per 100,000 are over 200 uh, persons within the last 14 days, ours have been well over 200 per 100,000. If our percentage of positive tests is over 10%, ours have been well over 10%. Um, and you know we've already done everything we can within within the schools. And I think one other thing people need to understand is we have so many cases now. We're overwhelming our contact tracing. We've hired dozens of contact tracers, and we're overwhelming their ability, given the number of cases that we're seeing in Lucas County, to even do the contact tracing in as effective way as it ought to be done. So that's a problem. And uh, you know the inpatient beds are becoming more and more full. Uh, we've got uh, large hospitals in Cleveland looking for ventilators. Uh, I mean, this is a, as bad as it's been the entire year uh, in terms of the number of cases. So to me, I'm looking at this uh, at the CDC's recommendations and we're hitting a bunch of, of indicators that tell us that we're at high, actually highest risk for developing transmission within the schools. And uh, I just think that to, to ignore those facts in our community right now, given how much disease is present in the community uh, is gonna put even more people at risk and make it even harder to get this under control. We, we absolutely need to hunker down for the next couple of months as much as we can. And I think sadly, uh, that would include the schools. Um, other board members to comment here, please. Yeah, Dr. Russ, uh, Dr. Monk here. Yes, thank you. I'm representing the city of Savannah, and and I just I, I echo what Dr. Fernandez and what Dr. Ross and Dr. Zazinski have, have said. But what needs to be emphasized and even overemphasized is that that if our healthcare institutions get overwhelmed, if you, if you think that the curve is going up precipitously now, it's going to be straight up, and and when 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 uh, People are talking about the effects 
of this situation of the lockdown or the or closing schools on kids, just think about the effects of on kids of having their parents die, having their grandparents die, having their best friends uh, in in bad shape, and and don't forget about the long term effects of of this disease. Uh, they 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 may well last for a lifetime. Uh, we are we are very close to overwhelming our our local healthcare institutions, and 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 that will you know that that's that's a that's a, a, a stone going down the hill and picking up picking up speed very very fast. And uh, the those community members that that think that the that the board has not taken all these factors into consideration. Uh, don't uh, <clears throat> appreciate the, the time and effort that we are all putting into this. Uh, we are very concerned about about taking care of taking kids out of the out of the the situation where they learn the best in, and and we don't we don't approach this lightly. Uh, but we are we are very very close to 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 the breakdown point, and that really cannot be overemphasized. Thank you. Jonathan, this is Fritz Byers. May I make a comment, please? Please, Fritz. I want to explain just briefly on what uh, Matt Hireman said. Um, I don't have much to add on the health imperatives that the physicians who are part of this board have commented on, but I would like to address some of the governmental aspects of this consistent with what Matt said and offer a few other observations. Um, our system of government in Ohio goes back to the 1802 Constitution and then the amendment of that Constitution in 1851. And for all those 170 years since it was ratified and adopted in 1851, the principles of separation of powers and checks and balances have served us very, very well. We didn't invite them, invite them they're rooted in principles of the Enlightenment, and they are pervasive across the United States. As Matt said, it is not an accident, rather it is the result of decades, if not centuries, of received wisdom that there are certain decision-making processes within government that are properly insulated from the electoral process and properly placed in the executive branch and the General Assembly was lucidly clear when it created our current structure of county health departments. We certainly are mindful on this board of the role of boards of education and we honor their roles. But at the same time, we have to be guided by the mission that the Ohio General Assembly has established for health boards and that is that we are committed to being a leader in the public health by promoting and protecting the health of all people where they live, learn, work, and play. My sense is that the various epidemiological and demographic imperatives that we face now, which the physicians have spoken today much more clearly than I would be able to, make clear that if we were to act responsibly for all the people of Lucas County in our community where they live, learn, work, and play. The order that we are contemplating today is the responsible thing for this health department to undertake. And I am strongly in favor of it. I am, I assure you all, mindful of the difficulties this presents for an, in an educational setting but there is no doubt whatsoever in my mind that in furtherance of our mission assigned to us by the Ohio General Assembly, consistent with the principles of the Ohio Constitution, that we are doing the right thing. And I stand strongly in favor of the order. Thank you, Fritz. Uh, other members of the board, would, would they like to comment? Anyone else want to weigh in on this or do I we do. want to? Okay, Come. thank you. Stana. 
Thank you. This is Dr. Donna Woodson. I appreciate uh, all the help people have given us. It has been an agonizing several months for members of the Board of Health. Every day, especially in the recent few weeks, we have hoped the numbers would get better. Uh, they have not. They have, in almost a stampede, become worse. This has been sleep depriving and mental anguish for board members. Many of us have different ideas when we started looking at what would be the responsible way to react to the coronavirus COVID-19 in our communities. And many of us have changed our minds on a daily basis as they see this catastrophe continuing to get worse. I particularly would like to emphasize uh, what uh, Dr. Monk said about chronic illness, because those of us in the health profession, not just physicians, but all healthcare workers, are looking to the future and seeing serious and significant problems, especially with its effects on heart disease. We uh, will need uh, many more healthcare professionals to take care of these. The more we can prevent now, the better. So for all board members, I thank you for your agonizing decisions. We have all probably changed our minds several times. Uh, I now fully concur with what's been put forward uh, by the Tweedle Lucas County Health Department in helping take care of our citizenry as is our uh, duty uh, to all our communities, no matter how difficult it may be, and thank the schools for what they've done so far uh, and their cooperation in dealing with this, and also for parents, community members, and our students. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Other board members? Um, this is Barb. I have an issue with the K through six. Um, that's the age where kids still need sitters. And I think it really poses a problem for people who have to go to work. Um, the older ones, at college and that, they're, they've done virtual learning, probably taken classes. It's probably not as big of a deal for them, even high school. But I feel like the lower grades, it's really difficult. And it's difficult for the parents. Um, I just <laughs> feel like it's just it's too difficult. Um, uh, like I said, the older ones, maybe not so much, and they don't need like babysitters. It, it's so hard for people who work to have to try and teach their children and also find someone to watch them during the day when you can't have like grandma or somebody watch them because they can't be near them. So I don't know, I, I just, I'm really up in the air on that one because I just sympathize with the parents so much. Um, I know if it was me, I would be, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> So that's my comment. Um, like I said, the older kids, maybe not so much, but the younger ones, it's, that's a tough one for me. So that's all I have to say. All right, thank Dr. you, Barb. Dr. Ross, can I, can I just make a comment? Yes, uh, Eric, go ahead. Barb, Barb that, that is so true. And that is something that, um, you know, we've struggled with uh, here at the department, trying to come up with the, the best way to make this all happen. We want those kids K through six to be in school. In fact, there's a couple um, schools that called me and said, well, my, my school goes to eight. Can, can I go K through eight? And, and, and yes, you can. I mean, we're trying to be measured and understand that you know, every school is gonna be a tad bit different. But the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that ki those kids definitely can be in school. The only, I think the only way that those kids may not be going to school, if those school, if those school buildings already have issues with either infections of the kids or their staff members. So they don't have enough of staff members to actually teach K through six. Um, so yeah, no, um, we're, we want those, though, definitely those kids to be in school K through six. I would hope that the preponderance of our school systems and our schools that have K through six uh, will keep them open and operational. Uh, but again, you know, um, let me give you, I just wanna give you just a couple numbers here. And I, don't, I didn't wanna burn us down with a lot of stats. 
but this week's numbers, currently there are 99 confirmed, if you would, cases of COVID in our student population in, in, in Lucas County. That, that, that may not seem much, but remember, we still we, we have some schools that have went virtual, uh, but also this is every week. Currently, we have 1,347 in quarantine. That, that, that's, that's quite a bit of kids. Um, so uh, again, we see, we see some numbers here. And, and again, that's why we're so concerned with making sure those K through sixth graders have every opportunity to make sure that they're getting their education so they don't have to burden mom and dad. Mom and dad don't have to stay home. We don't got to send them to daycare. Those are all things that um, really would be uh, against our thinking here at the department. Okay, other board members. Dr. Ross, this is Michelle Schultz. I uh, just wanted to say that I agree with this order. Um, unfortunately, these are very hard decisions to make, but I think it's in the best interest of everybody in Lucas County. Um, hopefully, if we do this, um, maybe when they go back to school, they can stay in school for the whole rest of the year then. And we won't have to do this again because we'll have the vaccine and life may go back a little bit to normal, as we say. Um, so I just wanted to put that on record that I do agree with this order. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Any other board members want to comment? Dr. Ross, this is Ted Kazarowski. I want to I want to reserve my comments here just for a moment, if I could. I'd love very much for us to be able to hear some uh, differing opinions, if we could. There are some, I think, that here are some people that would like very much to have an opportunity to, to voice their concerns. I, I would really feel that we owe it to them to allow them at least a few minutes here to be able to express their, their reasons for, for maybe denying or maybe doubting what we're trying to get done here. Uh, I'm again. I, I've been following the chat, and I and I'm, people are certainly weighing in on the char chat. Um, and uh, you know, many of the things that are being said there, uh, you know, are being taken into consideration at least by me on this. But I think, as several of the board members pointed out, our responsibility is certainly to the kids. Uh, we understand that. And uh, we understand that we are probably uh, creating a situation where for some children, there'll be negative effects. But we have to look at the entire community and we have to look at the fact that for uh, old, older and more vulnerable members of the community, that this is a life and death issue. Um, it is an educational issue for the kids. It is a mental health issue for the kids. I, we, we see that, we acknowledge that. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we would like if, if the schools are able to, to keep especially the, the kids K through six uh, in class if they can. Um, you know, all those things may be school system by school system dependent, but uh, we think anything we can do to decrease the spread of COVID in our community, we need to speak to it. And again, looking at the Center for Disease Controls, coronavirus, community schools, child care indicators, we are busting through the highest risk of transmission in the schools. That's where our numbers are at. And to me, I think uh, given we have a, with our numbers as they are now, we have a high risk of spreading COVID within our community through the schools. If we persist with leaving them open, I think we're doing the right thing to shut them down to the extent that we can with some modification for the youngest children to try and help them with their learning and to avoid the mental health issues that are part of it. And this is, again, it's an agonizing sort of decision. Uh, but I think our responsibility is to use our best knowledge of public health science uh, to, to say that, I'm sorry, I wish our community didn't have more than 200 cases per 100,000 in the last 14 days. I wish we didn't have a greater than 10% PCR positivity rate in the people that were testing. I wish we we had uh, you know our hospitals uh, not being on the edge of being overwhelmed, uh, but that's where we're at. And all of those things would suggest that we need to close schools, according to the Centers for Disease Control, where, where our best public health scientists are looking at these things and trying to give us the best advice they can. So again, I I support this order. Um, 
and I understand that the community has great questions about it. I would encourage them to go to the Center for Disease Control site and read the information about, uh, about schools, the actual title of the section, if you would like it. Let me go up to the top here. I'm using my computer on the side here. Indicators for dynamic school decision-making. That's what, that's what it's updated as of September of 2020, September 15, 2020. So uh, that's what was last updated, but this is the indicators for whether we should be allowing our schools to be open. And if you look at the, at the, uh, the scoring system that they've got there, we're busting through the highest levels of risk for transmission in our schools. And that's why we're trying to make this decision. Three weeks ago, we weren't there. We weren't there three weeks ago. Now we are, and that's just the hard, cold facts of the number of cases in Lucas County. And uh, as much as I, I hate to say that we should do this, we do need to do it, at least according to the best public health science. And you know, I spent my whole life as someone who has studied public health, who understands public health, and appreciates the detail to which public health scientists go about making these decisions, and, and that's, that's where we're at. Um, so Eric, I don't know whether we're at a point. Uh, I, if any other board member wants to weigh in, they should. Uh, if not, I think we're about at a point where we'd like to proceed to a vote. I know Richard has a hard deadline at 11 and we're almost to 11. So I think we should probably proceed to a vote on the, on the uh, recommendation slash order. Dr. Ross, um, just two things. One, um, for the board members, the, even our best schools that I consider our, our golden schools that are doing everything right and really haven't had issues, um, they're starting to see cases. So uh, again, even, even our top-notch ones that are dealing with COVID and, and outbreaks and quarantine, um, we're, we're seeing some issues and, and that would make sense because of the amount of, of community spread. The other thing though, I wanna make sure that the board understands that what the resolution that what they received yesterday has changed. I read that one change. I want to make sure that the board understands too, um, relative to virtual learning. Um, I wanted to make sure, I, I think Matt said this, I wanted to clarify charter. Charter was entered. So all local, all local county schools and including public, private charter and parochial. All right. So that, that was a change. Um, I, I did add to that staff who need to do virtual learning are, can go into the buildings. Um, and uh, I do believe, oh, um, and then, um, no, I do believe that was the only changes. I'm sorry. Those are the only changes, Dr. Ross. Okay. So with those modifications, uh, are we ready to actually vote on this? Um, we will need a first discussion in a second. All right. So I need a motion uh, for, uh, for further discussion. Could I have a motion from one of the board members to accept this order slash resolution? Dr. Um, Monk, moves uh, with the... Dr. Monk, Dr. Uh, Monk, thank motion. You. Do we have a second, please? And then we'll discuss. Second, we have a... Matt Hireman. Thank you, Matt. So we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion before we proceed to a roll call vote on this? I have a question. This is Barb. Um, is this an order or a recommendation? This is it's an order. It's an order. I mean, now, again, as Eric pointed out, there, there are going to be schools who can and cannot perhaps uh, modify their K through six. And, and we're willing to modify the order for those that are able to keep the kids in. And that's part of this is that uh, is that allowing us to do that. But anything that's happening inside that school building, other than K through six and the teachers being there, if they're teaching virtual, we don't want those activities inside those school buildings. That's basically what we're saying, correct, Eric? Yes, yes. yes. So uh, again, uh, if you need to take one more minute to quickly review the order, keeping in mind that we made a couple of modifications to it around, uh, around the uh, charter schools, as well as around the issue of sports. I think there are a lot of questions about sports. Could you clarify um, some of the reasons for that? I think I that- Were there a lot of positive cases? We certainly so, had a significant number of positive cases in uh, club sports. 
Uh, and again, at least in our community so far, there have not been, but, but the fact is, is that you know, we're asking kids to be in a locker room together. We're asking kids to be inside the school together in a gym. Uh, those are just right now bad ideas with community spread going the way it is. And I have to say that at least we've been lucky so far. We have not seen a lot of cases coming out of our high school organized sports. But that doesn't mean, given the numbers in the community, that we won't be seeing that very, very soon. It's kind of like you're saying, you know, I can see the train. And we're trying to say, let's get off the tracks because any of these congregate activi activities uh, create increased risk for spread within the community. And although the kids may not get deathly ill, if they spread it to others in their families or other vulnerable people, they're gonna get deathly ill. And now we're in this situation where we're about to overwhelm our medical resources. So I understand, and, and I understand the mental health. I played, I played sports my entire life, I still play sports. Um, nothing I've missed more than not being able to play basketball the last eight months. Um, th the fact is, is that it's dangerous right now. And the, the numbers indicate that danger. Go to the CDC website, read their indicators. These are the people who've been thinking about this the hardest for the longest now. And they're telling us that with the number of cases we've got in our community, the positivity rate we've got in our community, that we're likely to see spread within our schools very soon. And what that will do is it'll increase spread everywhere in the community. And we have to think about the entire community. And it's not that we're not thinking about the kids. We are. We know this is a huge issue for the kids. I know what it would have been like if somebody told me that I couldn't have played the high school sports that I played when I was younger. I would have been angry. I would have been sad. Uh, this is not something we fail to understand. But the fact is, is that we've got to make a tough decision based on the entire community, not just the kids. And it's a very difficult balancing act. But at least from reading the CDC indicators, we should be shutting down our schools. And if we can keep K through six, which are the most vulnerable kids, where the, it makes the biggest difference to have them in school, if we can keep them open and the schools can manage that, we're, we're welcoming that. So we, that's my comment in the discussion session here. We have a motion, we have a second. Is there further discussion? Dr. Ross, just mm -hmm. to, to Barb Sorrento's point, th thank you, Barb. Um, every sport, we, we've, been, we've been looking at sports specifically since summertime. Every sport has had outbreaks, individuals that have been uh, quarantined or isolated, even, even, um, e even swimming now, I just found out yesterday, uh, we've, we've been impacted, which I would have never thought that that would yeah. be a sport that would be impacted. That's, so that's a low we, risk. we have had issues on sporting teams. Uh, we've actually had to, um, you know, um, quarantine entire teams, um, this year, uh, because of the, the, of the issues that are bringing into the teams. Um, so again, Barb, yeah, yeah, we've had, we've had issues on, on those, uh, sporting teams. <clears throat> So are we ready to proceed to a vote? Further yeah. comments from members of the board? We're in the discussion. We have a motion. We have a second on the floor. There, have been, there have been several requests to reread the order or at least show it uh, before we take the vote. Uh, can that be done? It can be done. I'm worried that we're going to lose one of our board members. I think we still would have a quorum. Eric, would you mind just clarifying the high points of this, exactly what schools are covered, the dates from which they are covered, um, what kinds of schools are covered, and the sports that are covered and how they're covered? Could you just, just hit the high points of that to make sure that it's clear? You're muted, Eric. Eric, you're muted. Sorry, first time on Zoom. Um, do you see the resolution? No. No. Hold on, please. It's coming up. There we go. I'm sorry. Forgive me. So we'll go to this section. Um, it's on your screen. Um, all Lucas County schools, including public or private charter and parochial schools, will be closed from December 4th, 2020 at 4 p.m. to July, to Jan, excuse me, January 11th, 2020 at 8 a.m. 
the board highly recommends that all schools not wait until December 4th, but to close immediately. I think that's the high point. Uh, we are saying that um, K through six should, can remain open. Uh, we are looking at them, but those individuals that have K through eight, you know, again, they may be re remain open. However, we are really looking at that seven to 12th graders to go virtual. Um, those parochial schools or religious schools uh, may hold religious classes and ceremonies. The, um, the idea then too is, uh, again, if, if there's a hybrid or, or something along those lines for those elementary, those elementary schools to do, that's, that's fine as well too. We wanted to give every option there. Um, all school buildings may uh, open to hold exams, staff to provide virtual instruction and for special needs education requiring in-person instruction. Uh, these dates were chosen to limit the, time, the, the number of times school will need to switch between virtual and in-person learning mo models due to holiday breaks that the schools have already scheduled. I, I think this is another high point to limit COVID-19 spread among students. All sports and extracurricular activities are prohibited from utilizing any school building's interior space for practice or contest, contest during the same time period. What this truly means is that, uh, again, um, CYO, uh, other other entities, not just high school sports, um, should not be inside of those buildings. Matt, does that does that work? Yeah, I think so. I think it was just, uh, and thank you, Dr. Woodson, as well. It's just I just think everyone wanted to make sure we're clarifying exactly what's covered and and what is not covered. So, thank you. Sure. Any call further comments question. from members members of the I board? Or shall expires. I call the question for vote, please. Thank you, Fritz. Uh, so we have a we have the question called. Uh, uh, is there? Do we need a second for calling the question? Yeah, we already did that, Dr. Ross. Okay. Um, so uh, I think we're ready to proceed to a vote then. Yeah. Uh, how about a roll call? Further? All right. Fritz Byers. Yes. Richard Fernandez. Yes. Matt Hireman. Yes. Ted Kazarowski. Yes. Dr. Monk. Yes. Uh, Susan Postal, I'm sorry. Uh, Donald Murray, Susan Postal, Dr. Ross. Yes. Barb Sorrentu? No. Thank you. Michelle Schultz? Yes. Dr. Donna Woodson? Yes. Uh, the order is in place. Uh, we will go ahead and get that out to everybody. We will make sure that the community um, has it on our website, social media, and the media has it, Dr. Ross. All right, thank you. You know, I, I think one other thing before we uh, adjourn the meeting, uh, I, I think that everybody needs to understand that the board members have struggled with this. We've been in communication now for about a week talking about this very issue and what we need to do. And I think what we're trying to do is act on the best advice of our best public health science. That's where we're at. And we're trying to protect the entire community, not just the school kids. And I, and I know that this is a burden on the school kids. So please understand that, that we're doing the best we can here with the best knowledge that we have. And uh, the other thing to remember is that uh, we're, we're just one group of individuals who are you know, entrusted with this responsibility. And it's not that this board can't meet again and begin to make modification if we see dramatic decrease in the community. If we head back in the direction where the risk of transmission through the schools has dropped, there's no reason that we couldn't let people go back sooner. It's just that the likelihood of that is pretty low right now. We know this, is a, this has momentum, so to speak, and we can almost count on the fact, given the number of cases that we're seeing, that, that we're gonna see a, additional cases grow over the next two to four weeks. And that's why we're taking this action now. We, we're trying to get off the tracks before the train hits us. Uh -huh. All right. So, uh, Eric, I think, are we ready to entertain a, a movement for adjournment here? Yes, Dr. Ross, we are. Okay. So could I have a motion from one of our board members to adjourn? No move, Monk. Could I have a second, please? Second, Fernandez. All Thank in favor. You. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Or any, any opposed? Aye. All right. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thanksgiving.